firstly I'd like to apologize for the delay in uh, getting this video out to you um, the country obviously went into lockdown and uh, I was moored in a place where there was very poor phone signal uh, and very little internet and um, hence the delay really but uh, anyway yeah I hope you enjoy the video Still on the Shropshire Union Main Line, we're going from Turley Locks to Market Drayton to the Adderley Lock Flight and finally the Audlam Lock Flight. Welcome to another episode and I'm starting at Turley Wharf where I've been trying to get to for a very long time. A very windy Turley Wharf it is too and um, I've got the five locks to do um, just behind me um, but I thought I'd start by having a look at the facilities here now according to the Nicholson's guide. The, uh, there is a, a Nelson pump out station, a sanitary station um, and a water point so uh, yeah we'll have a quick look. According to the CRT website, the water point here isn't working because the farmer's borehole has dried up. This is a very pretty flight of locks. This journey was made after leaving Goldstone Wharf in my previous vlog. Winds were gusting at about 50 to 55 miles an hour and I wouldn't normally cruise in such conditions. But, having been at Goldstone for a week, I desperately needed shopping and to spend some time in civilization. The locks were built from stone, which was quarried from the nearby wood sieves cutting. If you look closely at the rock face, you can see the indentations made by the Navi's picks nearly 200 years ago. There are some pretty peculiar decorations along this flight. Between locks 4 and 5 you're advised to set the next lock and open the gate before leaving the lock that you're in. It's just not possible to moor alongside the towpath in the pound between 4 and 5. More odd decorations. Fozzy bear, perhaps? I moored overnight in Market Drayton. The canal lies about half a mile east of the town centre, and there are plenty of visitor moorings. The wharf sells all the usual fuels, diesel, gas, solid fuel, and there's a small chandlery. Boaters' facilities are opposite the wharf. The town is worth a look if you get the opportunity. The centre has plenty of small shops, takeaways, pubs, uh, restaurants and, uh, and a couple of supermarkets and there's a good variety of architectural styles. There are plenty of black and white half timbered buildings along with the usual Georgian and Victorian. There's a good market on a Wednesday but actually less stalls on a Saturday. Interesting fact, a Salopian is someone who comes from Shropshire. Stocked up with food and on my way again. And time to find a more rural mooring, I think. A 
And Betton Cutting seemed an ideal place to spend a night. I had settled by the fire that evening and was looking at my research for this vlog when I realised I was moored exactly where one of the Shroppies hauntings takes place. A ghost is said to shriek at passing boaters. Well, I stayed here for two nights and the only shrieking I heard was that of the resident owls. In the morning, the sun was shining and boats were on the move. Time for me to crack on too. If you look closely at the centre of the picture in the next clip, you'll see a kingfisher. Always a majestic sight. Nice to see the dairy cattle out on the Cheshire Plains again. Here we are at Adderley Top Lock. The lock flight has five locks, dropping 31 foot in total. On the earlier canals, locks tended to be spread apart. However, on the later canals, such as this one, the locks were arranged into flights in an attempt to save water. Another three to go. Hmm, must clean that well deck out. And repaint the chimney. And cut those logs up. And get a hairpiece. Age does terrible things to a man. Daffodils are beginning to add a bit of colour to the canals. Spring must be on the way. chilly this morning. What a difference from yesterday. Uh, I moored last night at the bottom of the Adley lock flight, which wasn't particularly good because there was very little phone signal and no internet or, you know, um, intermittent internet, which wasn't great because I tried to upload a video to YouTube last night and couldn't. But today I'm going to be doing the 15 locks of the Audlem lock flight, um, which should give me a good workout. The Union Canal is reputedly our most haunted canal. Uh, there's the Roman centurion in Chester uh, who was killed for having a assignation with a local woman. Um, there's the American Air Force pilot who crashed his plane into the canal at uh, Little Om. Um, there is the really helpful ghost uh, on, I think it's lock three, yeah, lock three on the Turley lock flight. Uh, now, if you apparently if you're going through there in the middle of the night, he will he will very kindly close the gates behind you. Good man, eh? <laughs> oh, and how can I forget Monkey Man? Of course, uh, Monkey Man hides in the shrubs near the uh, double arched bridge um, and uh, leaps out at people and shrieks at them. He's huge and hairy and has enormous eyes, apparently. <laughs> um, I mean, this all this all started apparently uh, a while ago. Oh, very noisy geese. Um, 
yeah, he, he leapt out of the uh, leapt out of the shrubbery um, and got on a, a boater's horse and galloped off into the night. Um, so, and the uh, well, the boater was obviously terrified and bedridden for days on end, apparently. So, um, yeah, I put all this ghostly behaviour down to uh, the profusion of pubs there are along this canal. There are good visitor moorings at the top of the flight. I wish I'd stayed here last night. Now, I don't know if the phone and internet would have been any better, but it's certainly prettier. And there's a little stall with an honesty box, selling cold drinks and clotted cream, scones and Cheshire Farm ice cream. As I opened the ground paddles on the top lock, this huge lump of reeds floated into the entrance. Obviously, I had to clear this before proceeding. Not like that, Andrew. You won't do it like that either. And in the house kindly lent me an agricultural hay rake. It was still too heavy to lift out of the canal, so I went and got my bow saw. Oops, broke the rake. In the end, I had to saw it into about eight more manageable pieces. Well, that wasn't the best start to the day then, was it? Um, I've just spent like over an hour clearing that great big weed ball out of the uh, top lock. And as you can see, I'm soaking wet absolutely filthy and my hand is cut so um, and it's been in the cut so uh, I'm just gonna pop inside and have a shower and change my clothes I think well I've had a shower I'm having a cup of tea and all's well with the world again eh um, yeah time to crack on with these 15 locks I think There are visitor moorings between locks numbers two and three. The Mid Cheshire Ridge is clearly visible to the west. Don't advise stepping across the gates unless it's something that you're really comfortable with. And if you're falling, well you can all have a good laugh at my expense. Gorse flowers 
have that wonderful aroma of coconut. There are more visitor moorings between locks 11 and 12. That's above Audlam Bridge, Bridge 78. Oh, I do like Audlam. It's a lovely, lovely little village. Um, and I've done 12 of the 15 locks in the flight, but decided to uh, to more here. Um, I think I need to slake my thirst a little bit in the shoppy fly, which is behind me. Quick pint. I haven't been to a pub for about two months. Um, amazing. So, uh, but yeah, quite a day really. Uh, and I'm quite knackered, uh, and I could do with yet another shower. Um, but yeah, lovely day, enjoyed it. Thank you.